Hi, this is Steve Fortner from Keyword Magazine. I'm here with Mark Mothersbaugh of Devo, who is releasing their first new studio album in 20 years. We uh, just saw your amazing performances at Coachella and mm -hmm. on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Uh, Mark has been gracious enough to invite us into Mutato Musica, they are at Devo's headquarters and recording facility on Sunset Boulevard, where there is quite an impressive collection of vintage gear, which Mark's going to tell us okay. a little bit about some of his favorite pieces. Right. Um, you, know, you know, the one caveat I'm going to give you is that we did empty out the basement and put it all in storage so that Devo could rehearse. But there are some things here. Like, here's a nice carillon that, uh, that is like half uh, tubes and half... Um, Real, you know, real chimes in there. So it's has a nice. You can always feel like it's Christmas, or there's somebody at the door when you're in Mutato. Just come over here. Cool. You know these. Oh wow! This, this is this that's is the AKS old, with the touch plate. Keyboard. Yeah, that's like an old Brian Eno synth. Um, this is, to me, is known as the um, Life Aquatic synth because I use this for almost every uh, all the cues in. Uh, uh, that Wes Anderson movie, um, but it also got used on the new Devo record. We, we did a couple songs where we used this little sequencer up here. Oh yeah, this has got the mini sequencer in it. This is uh, Memory Moog. My memory of it is I, I was calling Bob every week when he first announced he was going to uh, put out a, a theremin. And so I, every week, I, I said, I'm buying the first one, so I sent him the money right away. And he said, okay, you can have the first one. And um, Every week I'd say, do you have it done yet? And he'd go, no. And after about a year, he just sent this to me. <laughs> he said, I'll call you when, it, when, it, when it's finished. An old, probably 70s mini um, that gets used on stage with Devo. Uh, I had to get the, uh, the people at Moog to, to do a, a mod for me because it doesn't have reverse sawtooth. And I use the sawtooth both forward and reverse for Smart Patrol. This is the room I mostly work in, so that I didn't have to have an uh, engineer full time. I went back to an old SSL that was kind of like from the the, the salad days of Devo. The good days of Devo is like, um, and so I usually just sit over here. And Logic is my my weapon of choice these days. There's probably about seventy some guitars in this building. Uh, the piano, of course, is like minified, so that's so nice. Yeah, it's a disc piano, huh? Yeah, so that helps. It can be one of the old Moog school models. Those are this great. Is the Sonic 6. These were designed for teaching, right? Yeah, yeah. That's a gorgeous synth there. Oh, wow. Have you gotten to record with that at all? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've recorded with everything here in the building. We it's use a really it nice action, too. I love this one. It's got a little speaker in it. You know, you can like take it to a hotel room with you when you're on tour. And this is a dulcetone, an English thing that was super cheap. At the, but but it's, sometimes it's just the right sound for a movie because like... Um, we heard these in Rugrats too, I would imagine. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, probably Pee Wee I started. <laughs> this is not really a circuit bent instrument. What it is is it's great, though. I use this on, on the Devo record, um, and what's great about it, it's just an oscillator in here that this row you tune here, this row here, so they're like yep. note pickers, so it's like an alternative keyboard. Yeah, this is just a little Yamaha drum pad. This one's got, this one's really good. Uh-oh. That's the other thing about circuit bent stuff. It's wonderfully unpredictable. Yeah. When I think the battery's dying, but it's still a pretty good instrument. An LFO. I know, it's very likable. You can get ugly with that stuff. That's, that's, this is one where they like they they the different places on the and then there's a photo cell down here and a strobe light. Awesome. Um, but 
So if you only needed five notes, it's a great uh, trigger. I think this one, I think this one will work. This one I used on the album. harpsichord with, with a speaker in it. It's so a digital, digital harpsichord. Yeah. But it's kind of cool because you have all these other things. I thought Wes Anderson was going to go for this, to be honest with you, and he never really did. A very nice hat. Check that one out. Somebody, oh. somebody made those. those um, and then uh, a hearing test. Do you want to... Want to have your hearing tested? You... Uh, I don't know. You might have seen these before. I don't know. They're the uh, Otomatone. Oh, it's a Japanese toy. It's a Japanese toy. Oh. Is it... Oh, wow. And you have different scales. Do a whole bass line on this. The pure Ubu version of the uh, of the Synthi AKS. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, this is the, the uh, Putney VC S3. Putney CS3. Yeah. There's an old modular mini. Okay, we just got some Synthi style of those. the bass sound on this enough that we have been using on Jerry stage yeah. so when we got this we thought oh that's that's great that sounds okay. that's the sound we want to start using so we put this out on stage and I remember the first I couple shows we were playing Minneapolis or something the first show we came out and we started the first song it was going in there it was like boom 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 okay. boom boom boom, boom, boom. Uh, I don't know. and all of a sudden Jerry's bass went Bloop. and I'm looking at him like what the hell and he's looking at me like this. We found out that the lights from the stage were heating up this keyboard and making it play. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it yeah. took us like really a couple shows sense. to figure out what was going on. I would fire this out for you, but it's it would be complicated right now because you need to hook it to a shop vac, which I have in the other room, and I have the tubing, but I ran the tubing upstairs, and the thing's so heavy, I couldn't talk anybody here to help us carry it upstairs. Oh, so it's like a, it's a pipe organ where you use the shop vac? This is a Clive, real oh. Clive, it was in the 20s. Uh, when I bought it, it came with a, I still have it in the garage, there's a red and gold chariot, because this was, it originally belonged to the circus, and they had a couple things. It's a beautiful sound. You know no records, right? You know what they say. Yeah, I mean, it was one of the original synthesizers, really. Yeah, yeah, because, uh, yeah, you hear it like, it was before there was, I mean, there was a theremin. There was always the theremin for, like, that kind right. of ethereal, ghostly sound. But this was the other choice, and this was the more beautiful one of the two. Now, this room, I have to say that six months ago, you would have walked in here, and we couldn't walk in. We would have just, like, a thin tunnel. And we would have had everything from ARPs and, and all sorts of strange keyboards in here to choose from, to look at. This is where the Electronium lived, too. Yeah, Electronium was here. Tonto was right there, and the Electronium was right there. There's the EML 500 that, for us, about the only thing we got useful out of it was a, a whip crack for um, Whip It. 
but um, or, or in freedom of choice, a <laughs> the the in the factory sound came out of that thing. This is one of those oil can uh, rever reverb. Oh yeah. You know, this is an interesting box. Have you ever seen these? The poly box. Yeah, the it made your monophonic synthesizer polyphonic. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Yeah. In a cat, you know, that's that was. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a ripoff of the Odyssey, and they got successfully sued and shut down. Octave weren't allowed to put out cats anymore. Mm, they made this uh, synthesizer, like the rack mount synth called the Voyetra 8, which was one of my favorite analog synths ever. Sense. Really yeah. great sounding synth. Um, in 1980, Devo was rehearsing at a place called Modern Music, which, and it was a bunch of storefronts, and then there was one big room, and uh, Pink Floyd was rehearsing for a tour while we were writing songs. and so. They backed up their semis and they were loading all this stuff they were taking with them on tour. They were throwing these things in the trash and I said, what are you doing with that? Can I have it? They had this old synthesizer. And he said, yeah, you can have that. He gave me, uh, Pink Floyd gave me an Ondialene. And it still has all the stickers that they put on it when they oh were using it. Oh my God. Um, this keyboard I love because it's the only keyboard that I ever found where, where when you needed tremolo, you went like this. It, it, it has a, the tremolo was built in, and it had a ribbon. It was like probably the oldest ribbon I've ever played. And if you were trying to figure out what it sounds like, just remember, um, what am I thinking? Runaway, Runaway. Del Shannon Runaway. Del Shannon, yeah. yeah. That real nasally yeah. kind of sounded that like what a, it is. That's what, that's, yeah. And then over here is a collection about... Five years ago, Daniel Lenoir went through a deacquisition phase, too, and sold me about 30-some microphones from his uh, New Orleans studio, including a, a whole set of mics that he and Brian Eno bought, and they were used for Octoon Baby. Um, oh. I have a set of six matching, uh, matching Neumann mics for recording orchestra. Um, oh. And just a... Oh, and so it's all, yeah, you all have they're, it. They're all in cases. Protected, and, as they should be. Yeah. But there's, like, a lot of old and esoteric things. Here. M49B. That's some old Telefunken stuff, too. Yeah. So, uh, new mic. Yeah, that's new ones. They're, yeah, so, but these are all oldies up here. First German, East German Neumann. Oh my God! This is just this is like serious gear porn. This is, I mean, yeah, this is serious this is gear. Here. A mic collection to die for. Yeah. So that's kind of until we move all the gear back in here. Mm -hmm. That's kind of it for now. Mark, thank you very much. Your new album, Streets, June fifteenth. You're going to be hearing a lot more from Devo. Visit them. Become part of the revolution of de-evolution at clubdevo.com. Mark. On behalf of everyone who reads Keyboard Magazine, thank you for showing us around. Sir, it's an honor to be at the magazine that we all need here at this building. Thank Can you. Did I say that right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Please.